Well, there's the thermocouple mounted up. Like I said, I got this jury rig together. This is just for test purposes only. It's, but I've got the PID sitting up there on top. I put the SSR there on the wall. I'm going to take it back there and plug it into the wall, the dryer outlet, and see what happens. Hopefully you don't get too many spark. Well, it's plugged in. Everything seems to be working so far. Uh, no sparks. No flames. Uh, I've got the pit up there on top, and I just left it set for 50 degrees, which is what I had it when we were doing the test on it. It says 20 now. Uh, and there's the burners. They're warming up. I could smell them getting hot. I went ahead and closed the door. Temperature's coming up. I just closed it. It was staying at a steady 20. It's up to 24 now. And it should. The heaters are working. So I just want to do this slow and let everything cook off uh, before I heat it up any warmer. Well, it's been about three or four minutes and it's up to 34 degrees. I can feel the heat on the cement board on the door there where it's not insulated but feeling around on the uh, sheetrock around the outside I can't feel anything even right here this is right where the burner one burner is is right here and it's no it might be a little bit warmer than there but it's hard to tell I, I can't really feel any difference so and there's very little insulation between here and the burner pan I mean not very little there's only a couple inches insulation between the burner pan and this back wall the sheetrock top top is not even warm anyway I just wanted to do this slow give a chance for everything to to heat up slow and gradually and uh, cook the moisture out of it okay my first test was kind of a bust the unit heated up the PID was uh, looking good and it reached uh, 50 degrees and then it uh, shut off, the, the PID unit shut off and the solid state relay shut off. The lights went out on it and stuff. But the burners didn't shut off for some reason. And I can't figure out why they would have a complete circuit. I had the two of them, the two burners run in parallel and uh, one hot lead going up to the solid state relay and uh, then coming back and going into both of my uh, burners and then one hot lead going to the other two legs of the burners so they came on fine when it come time to shut down they, they wouldn't shut down I uh, checked the voltage on the solid state relay and there was no voltage on those two legs or on the on the solid state relay on the hot leads on them and there was no voltage on the control leads on them so it just kept getting higher and higher the temperature and I got up to 90 degrees or so I uh, finally pulled the plug on it uh, it's been about 30 minutes or so 25 30 minutes and it's still cooling down so I've got it reset now and I've got it hooked up on just one burner it may be that I have to get one relay for each burner should be able to run them both off of one PID unit I don't know but I can go ahead and get uh, a couple more of those probably won't order from the same place since it took me a month and a half to get it here anyway I've got it hooked up now to just one burner and we'll see how it goes the box is pretty efficient it's st still staying pretty warm in there uh, temperature hasn't dropping very fast and I went ahead and insulated the front of it here the the cement board got up to about 125 130 degrees uh, with no insulation on it the outside here most of it stayed around 60 some degrees except right over the spots where the pans are for the burners and they got up to about 70 I think the one on the back got up to about 75 degrees and the top stayed pretty cool it was about uh, 70 degrees or so all right I'm gonna try this again I've got it set up now with just one heating element hooked up disconnected the other one apparently that uh, solid state relay is not I don't know strong enough to support two of those heating elements now, I don't know why it wasn't working as I checked the voltage on it there was no voltage going through the relay there's no voltage going through the 
to the relay from from the uh, PID unit. So anyway, both of them it wouldn't shut down even though it was shut off. Both burners stayed hot. So apparently voltage was going through somewhere. I was worried that maybe it had a short or something and it was going through the ground and just running on 110 or something. And I, I ohmed everything all out and everything. There's no continuity between the, the sheet metal and any of the hot leads or anything. So that's not the problem. Might just have to run two uh, relays, one for each one of the burners, uh, heating elements. I don't know whether we can run them off of one PID or not. So what I've got now is the burner on the left wall going, and uh, the other one's not. It shouldn't be. I'd have been really surprised if it was going too, since it's completely disconnected. So I'm going to let this heat up to 50 degrees and cycle for a while, and see where we go from there. Then heat it up to maybe 100 degrees, and gradually work it up to the so I can get to 400, 425 Fahrenheit. It's been five minutes and we're up to 34 degrees. Let me get a shot of the clock back there. It's 25 after 8 now. We started at 20 minutes after 8 and went from 22 degrees to 35 degrees in five well, minutes. I didn't uh, check right away, but it's right on 50 degrees now and it's been 20 minutes. It's right at 35 after the hour right now. So, uh, and uh, it's cycling on and off. But it's holding right about 50, 51 so far. We'll see what happens. I'll let it go while I do some other stuff. The burner's not quite as bright. Oh, it's pulsing. You can see it glow. And then it drops down a little bit. Now it's cooling off. Yeah, it's been 55 minutes now. And it's starting to settle down on a temperature now. It's coming down to 52, 53. Uh, it went up to 60 degrees for a while, 61, even though it, it's bit cycling, which it wasn't doing before when I had both uh, heating elements hooked up. It just uh, kept going up and the elements stayed red. This time it's, uh, it's cycling. I think it takes a while maybe for it to learn. So it's dropped down to 52 degrees now. It's kind of settling out. Of course, that oven uh, holds the temperature pretty long once it heats up it takes a long time for it to set back down uh, to that all that cement board heats up and everything i'm going to go ahead and uh, crank it up to 100 degrees and and see what happens then okay yeah, the burner kicked on full now you heard an audible click when it clicked kicked on and it's climbing i've got it set for 100 degrees it's up to 56 57 now, 100 degrees is 212 Celsius, or a Fahrenheit, I mean, boiling point of water. I had to look that up, but I should have remembered that. Uh, I took my infrared thermometer and measured some temperatures on there. And the front here on the insulation is right around 67 degrees or so. And the window was 82 degrees. And the sides over here were right around 70 degrees. Right there in the middle where the uh, burner is, it was 72 or 73 degrees, but and then on the back side, it was just below 70 degrees, uh, and the top is like 71 degrees, and that was at uh, 50 degrees uh, Celsius. That's uh, 120 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit in there. This side here was cooler it was like 67 or 68 well, degrees. The box has gotten to 82, 83 degrees and it's been uh, about 25 minutes from uh, 50 to 82. That's just with one burner going. Get the moisture build up on the glass here on the, between the two layers so hopefully that'll get warm enough to cook out of there. Right about 40 minutes to go from 50 degrees to, to 100 degrees. It's uh, bouncing back and forth a little bit there now, and it's uh, shutting down and kind of coasting, I guess, up to 100. But it's hit it a couple times, but it's right at 40 minutes to 100 degrees. I think it was 40 minutes from ambient temperature to 50 degrees, hour and a half, not quite an hour and a half, to 100 degrees. So if we're going to go to 200, it'd probably take... If it goes at the same rate, about three three hours to get up there with the one burner. 
I guess the way to do that would be, I think I've got a 220 volt switch someplace I could get and uh, hook one burner up just to the switch to bring the temperature up and then uh, shut that one off and then just let it run on the one burner. But uh, I think that's going to be enough for one day. Let's just check this out again tomorrow. I'll let this soak a little bit here at uh, 100 degrees and uh, and we'll shut it down for the night. Now, 100 degrees, and it just reached 100 degrees, so it will be change as this box soaks, as the heat soaks in it. But the front of this is somewhere around 85 degrees. The window is about 120 degrees. This side over here, um, it's about 85 degrees or so on the side, and then in the middle where it's uh, where that pan is for the burner. Uh, heating element it's 100, 100 degrees. The back about 75 to 80 degrees. Surprisingly enough the top is uh, 75 to 80 degrees. Like I said that'll all probably change. These uh, now these warmed up a little bit. They're still on the cool side when I touch them, these studs. The ones here in the middle are, are warm. You can't. You can touch them, but you can't hold on to them very long. Uh, more than a few seconds. I didn't check to see what their temperature was. Of course, all that, like I said, is subject to change as that thing sits there and heat soaks. Uh, we've got heat transfer through the screws through that uh, cement board into the metal stud, so those are going to transfer heat. And some of those sidewalls only have two inches insulation. Some of them have three. This front, I've got six inches there, but it's packed in tight, so. Uh, need to pull that out, but I'm not. I'm going to leave the paper on it and leave it full on there until I get the front covered up. And I'm probably not going to cover the front until I figure out what I'm going to do for a, a door latch. Although that door latch seems to be working, but got some gases leaking out of the top of it there, and it's going to get warmer up there. So probably find some place else to put that PID unit other than just sticking it up on the top, but. It's not near as hot up there as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I turned this thing on this morning. did better than I expected. It went from 20 degrees ambient temperature to 100 degrees in about 45 minutes, which with just one burner on in there is, is not too bad. That's better than I expected. So it's uh, stabilized now. It's been about an hour now since I turned it on, and it's fairly stabilized now at 100 degrees. It runs anywhere from 100 to 105 something like that so it's holding pretty steady so yeah well I'm gonna unplug it and cool it off and and fix up some way in there to hang uh, my parts for powder coating then I'll uh, heat it up to 200 and well, I think what is it 218 degrees or something like that for 450 degrees I'll have to check and make sure I moved, uh, put the ladder down here to put the PID unit on. To it was not that hot up there on the uh, roof of the on the top of the the heating unit, but uh, that's only at 100 degrees. And as it heat soaks, it gets hot, warmer and warmer up there. So there's a little seam right there where heat can leak out. Although it doesn't seem to be uh, doing too much. I would had some outgassing last night when I was first heating this up. Uh, and I think it was steam coming out of there, coming out through the top. I don't see any evidence of that today. Uh, and uh, the window here had some condensation on this outer window. And uh, when I shut it off last night, that was all gone this morning. So that evaporated out of there. So hopefully most of the moisture has gotten evaporated out of that. Uh, I'm sure there was a certain amount of moisture in the, in the fiberglass, but there's definitely moisture in the cement board. Well, there's going to be some in the drywall, too, because all this stuff was stored outside. Well, anyway, hopefully it's all done. Take it up to 212 degrees and let it cook for a while, and uh, it bakes most of the moisture out of it. Well, it took a long time for that oven to cool off enough for me to crawl in there to work on it. But I put the light bulbs in, and uh, I got one missing that got stolen to put in the oven in the house. And I put a piece of Unistrut, it's kind of a half Unistrut, or it's not near as deep as uh, some of them. But I put that uh, screwed into the 
stud that goes across the center connector there or the center piece and I can use that to hang my parts from so I just turned the oven back on started out at 22 degrees I'm going to go ahead and set it up to to go up to 218 or whatever it is for the powder coating and let it get up to temperature and then I'm going to cook some parts if it don't blow up All right, it's 230 and I've had the oven on for a few, couple minutes here, ten, 10 minutes or so. And I went ahead and set it to 231 degrees. I just checked the computer and 450 Fahrenheit is 232.5 degrees Celsius. So that's close enough. I got my lights on in there they work really nice we'll see if they'll hold up the temperature but they sh they should they're made for uh, oven uh, lights so that lights it up pretty nice in there well, it's been uh, just two hours since I cranked this thing up to take it up to 230 degrees it made it up to 183 degrees so it's gonna take a while to heat this thing up it, it did the first 100 degrees or from 20 degrees up to 100 degrees in about 40 minutes but uh, it's taken longer to get it up the rest of the way there a few cracks developed on the cement board inside there's one there going from where that cutout was up to the top a couple more in that panel down there on the bottom one going down to the bottom from the cutout and one going to the side and this bottom panel is cracked all the way along where that uh, stud goes across there. And then the other side panel, well that one's got another crack in it right there. Going to the side, and the side panel is the same way there. That's the one that's got the heat to it, but it's got a crack going from the panel over to the side. And another one going up to the top. And uh, that's all I can see through the window here. Well, it's going to be a while before it gets up to working temperature. Good thing about this is that uh, with all that mass in there, the concrete, uh, the cement board, uh, hardy board, whatever the hell that stuff's called, with all that mass in there, um, you can open the door and, and let all the warm, hot air out and it's going to heat back up again right away. It's not going to cool off very fast. Well, I just stuck my first piece in there in this oven and that's kind of what the oven was built for was that piece specifically of course there'll be other pieces and it fits in there pretty good that's a torque tube uh, for the Piper Super Cub the control torque tube that uh, controls the elevators and the ailerons it's all powder coated black I had a heck of a time with that uh, there was rust and crud uh, embedded in uh, the tube on the inside of the tube that goes down through there so I had to clean that all out it took a while several tries to get it cleaned out uh, wire brush and stuff like that and then once I got it all cleaned out there's uh, places on there that that uh, is lubricated with oil and grease and stuff and some of those welds have got some separations in them they're not exactly tight and uh, so grease and oil build up in uh, some rings and some places in there that I knew when I if it heated up when it gets in the oven and heats up the grease will melt and run out so I had to uh, do some special cleaning of that I washed it out several times with uh, paint thinner and then heated it up with uh, the torch to get the stuff to melt out and run out and did that a whole bunch of times so it wound up taking a heck of a lot longer than I anticipated and then I got a surprise when I looked at the paint. This is Eastwood gloss black paint. And it said on the can to uh, heat this at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. And I've been cooking it at about 425 or so for 20 minutes like everything else. And it's always turned out good, but that's 204 degrees Celsius. I came down and turned that down to 204 and, uh, it, it, and then went down and uh, finished painting the powder coat and got all the powder coat ready and everything and went ahead and uh, sprayed that and uh, this thing has come down to about 215 degrees uh, no, that's not really going to make that much difference I've had good results at it with uh, 250 but it's starting to starting to gloss now so uh, it's uh, 10 minutes to 8 so 
at 8 o'clock it should be done. Well here goes, here's my first part. This is uh, what I made the oven for, is uh, this part. I went ahead and left it in there a little longer than uh, what I was originally, well the original 10 minutes that it said. I left it in there for a little over 20. I wasn't sure whether it was completely flashed out when I uh, when I first started or not and I wanted to make sure it was done. The metal heated up so that the powder on the inside gets co uh, um, cooked too so it's not just from radiant heat and it looks pretty good. So this is it. This is a torque tube. Nice and pretty and shiny. That's two week works worth of work. To get an oven built for 20 minutes worth of coating. I've got a second piece to go in there. This tube goes through the torque tube and actually carries the uh, elevator control. And uh, I could have, could have got them both in there at the same time, but I couldn't get that one painted. Uh, I had to carry them up here a long ways to get them here, so I didn't want to take the time. So I let that one go. You know, the cement board in here is pretty cracked. It's got lots of cracks in it, all the pieces of them. Well, except, yeah, even the one on the other side uh, does. So, uh, but it does hold the heat in good. Um, all my walls here, uh, this thing's been cooking since 2.30, and it took two hours to get it up to temperature, and then it set for two or three hours while I was working on the part. I didn't think it would take me that long to get that part ready, but I ran into the trouble with the grease and stuff embedded in uh, crevices that wouldn't come out. So anyway, it's been sitting here heat soaking for, well, it's eight, quarter after eight now. So that's uh, six hours, almost six hours. And the front of it, the temperatures on the sides are all around 80 to 90 degrees. Uh, a little hotter on the corners where the heat concentrates, uh, about 110 or 115 right there in the middle of that panel on the left side where the heating element is. Uh, the ceiling is about 90 degrees, the roof on the outside. Uh, the plywood underneath is about 95 degrees or so. So I probably should have put a sh piece of sheetrock on first and then that plywood instead of just putting the plywood on there but uh, and the temperature in there it varies a little bit like I said the side walls vary a little bit so there's probably benefit from having a fan in it to circulate the air to keep it uh, to keep it even well here's my two parts that I just did that's what I built the oven for was these two this is the main torque tube these parts I did the other day in the other oven and uh, they, this one might be a little glossier than these uh, it's hard to tell they still look pretty darn good but this this piece goes inside this one like this and then these pieces go here this piece slides over it and that one's for the rear stick which I don't I keep in the airplane so those pieces I can put together now and put in the airplane. That's what I've been waiting for.